Hello and welcome back to another HitFilm tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can use the new crop, panning and zooming effect inside of HitFilm Express version 15. This effect is inside of both HitFilm Express and HitFilm Pro completely for free. This is not inside of an add-on pack, it's just built into the software. It does exactly what it sounds like it does, in that it can be used to crop into your footage and also create a simple pan and zoom effect. Let's get on with this tutorial. As you can see, I'm inside of a new composite shot, which has just got this footage of a candle. Inside of the effects tab, I'm just going to search for crop, pan and zoom, but I'm just going to search for crop because you don't need to search for the entire thing. And I'm just going to drag and drop this onto this footage. As you can see, things have already changed. We have now got a rule of thirds grid that appears on the viewer over the top of the footage. And there are also two buttons in the bottom left-hand corner of the viewer. These two buttons will decide which mode you're using. first one we've got is crop, and the second one is pan and zoom. If we then go and select the footage layer again, you can see that those buttons disappear and the rule of thirds grid also disappears. That is because these viewport display features only appear when you select the crop, pan and zoom effect. We're now just going to take a look at the crop features. If you start resizing this rule of thirds grid by going towards the edge of the rectangle and then you can use the different control points, you can see that we're getting a different shape. However, the aspect ratio of this rectangle is staying the same. What this has done is it has now shown us where the cropped in shape will be, meaning that when we select the footage layer again, we're then cropped in to where that rectangle was. The rule of thirds grid is quite useful for if you're wanting to make sure that you've got some form of composition with some of the compositional rules in, so you can use the rule of thirds by positioning an element on either side of one of the lines. This is really quick to do and didn't take much at all. Now we're going to take a look at the pan and zoom side of this. So if we just click on pan and zoom while we have the effect selected, you can see that we're introduced to a green rectangle and a red rectangle. The green rectangle is your starting position, and the red rectangle is your ending position. Also, you can see when you select pan and zoom, there is a new button in the viewport. This says reverse motion. If you click on this, it will swap around the red and green rectangles, meaning that you're starting where it ended and you're ending where it started. And then if you reverse motion again, it will take you back to what it was before. You can then position these boxes, so you can position the green box and also the red box. You can also see that there is a light grey box that is moving between the two boxes. This is the current view that you'll get at this point in the timeline. So at 7 seconds and 45 frames you will see that I will have this shot here, where the grey rectangle is. You can add keyframes to this to make it more advanced. So if you press the add keyframe button, and then you can position the grey rectangle that was created by doing that. And now we've added some extra motion so it goes up, and then it goes back across. If we go into the controls for this effect, you can see that we have Aspect Ratio and Auto Zoom. If we go to the Aspect Ratio controls, you can see that we have Timeline Original 16x9, 4x3, 1x1, and 9x16. Then we also have Custom. These are the Aspect Ratio, these are the aspect ratio controls of this rectangle here. Given that I've got mine set to Timeline, it will be at 16x9 because I'm editing at full HD, 19 by 20, 1080. So my rectangle here is 19 by 1920 by 1080, 
However, if we go over to the controls here, we can change the aspect ratio. And if we select custom, it will add a new drop down to the crop, pan and zoom controls, which will give us control over width and height of the rectangle. Another control in the crop, pan and zoom effect is the auto zoom. And to do this, I'm just going to crop in and create a neat shot here. And if we have this selected and turned on, then you can see that we're automatically put into the view of the smaller rectangle that we get when we're looking at the crop pan when we're looking in the crop view. However, if we turn off auto zoom, you can see that we're not zooming in and it's kind of just cutting everything else out. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you did then please leave a like and also subscribe. If you have any questions, then please feel free to ask and I will try to answer them. And if you have any tutorial uh, suggestions, then please say down in the comments below because I'd love to make them. See you next time. Goodbye.